I, I just can't stress enough how important it is to, to personally hear from the Lord. As much as we love Victory Conference and Sammy Rodriguez and Todd White, like they don't go home with you. So, I mean, sure, you can download their podcast, but, but you go home with you, the Word of God. But we have all that we need to hear from God. We have everything that we need to have genuine encounters and moments and moments with God, and we've been reminded of that, like I said, this week, um, when it comes to, even Paul said it last night, of, you know, what we experience here, that it's meant to be experienced. The, the presence of God is not confined to Victory Church. It's not confined to um, the greatest revival moments, and as much as there's an amazing move of God around the world, and there is a there is an amazing um, thing that God does when we collectively get together in corporate worship. There's a place for that, but let's not just settle with with corporate worship. Like it's not set. Let's not be. Um, let's not just have one angle, one level, one dimension, one dimension to our Christianity and our walk with Christ by just gathering corporately, but let's learn to experience and walk out the word of God on an everyday basis and just like, or vice versa, like sometimes we have allowed ourselves to um, do the opposite of Hebrews eleven twenty four. It says, "Forsake, do not forsake the assemblies of ourselves." You know, so many times we've been Todd White talked about last night. Church hurt, and so it's isolated. It's isolated ourselves. Like be like tap into all the dimensions of our walk with Christ that you possibly can. And you know this the the word that God had put on my heart. I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't feel like it's just like this, like, whoa, like fire, like word. I feel like it's kind of ABC and, and um, I feel like it's pretty, I'm talking to majority of people in here who have given their life to Christ. And if you haven't, man, today is the day of salvation. You are in the right place to call on the name of the Lord and experience what it means to be, to know God and, and known by him and um, but I really felt like, you know, it was on my heart, you know, it's a, a hopefully a practical word, a, a digestible word. And, you know, I'm passionate about um, people, including myself, like learning how to apply the word of God. If we do not know how to apply the word of God, how will we ever fulfill the will of God in our life? <laughs> like, I mean, that sounds so ABC, right? But if we want to fulfill the will of God, the plans and the purposes of God and live the Christian lifestyle, we have to know how to apply the word of God. If we still live that the Bible is irrelevant and it's still our last source, we will not accomplish the things that God has for us. The only way to accomplish the things that God has for us, the life, experience the empowerment and experience the life that he has promised is to know how to apply the word of God. I mean, how brilliant is that? If I want to experience the life that God has called me to live, then I have to know how to live the life that he's called me to live. I have to do what he's asked me to do. And you know, the uh, title of my sermon or word this, this morning is, it, it's yours to carry. Or is it to say, it's mine to carry. You know, I figured since this, it's our plan at least, that this is like the last time I'm going to be pregnant. Um, like it sounds kind of like finalized and we pretty much want to do that. I mean, Paul in every prayer, I'm pretty He's like, in the name of Jesus, let this be the last one. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, but, uh, you know, so I figured since it's the, the last one, at least in our plan, unless God leads us to, to foster and adopt, that I feel like it's only appropriate. I'm like, well, why not use an analogy of um, being pregnant? And then, of course, when you're given an analogy of being pregnant, and when you're pregnant, it's even more anointed because you're just, like, talking about it and, like, living it at the same time. And and anyways, but so how many, but um, I'm sure we're all familiar with, everybody say it's mine to carry. I'm sure you're all familiar with the term a surrogate mom, right? Where someone else carries the baby. There's an option where you, somebody else can carry the baby for you that you can have, somebody can go through the process of, 
um, pregnancy and the process of delivery for you. And you know, there's all reasons why people do that. Some people, they just cannot get pregnant and so that they choose that option. Some um, they've had complications during past pregnancies, and so they had um, they chose that option. And then some people they just simply don't want to stop working and endure the process of being uncomfortable, so they choose to go uh, the surrogate option. You know, I mean, to each his own. I'm not going to get into surrogacy, like if that's a word, be, but being a surrogate mom and and going all those multiple different reasons. And so I definitely don't want to dive into that topic as much as I want to bring to light that, yes, there is an option for someone to go and to pay for someone to carry and to deliver and deliver a baby for you. An option is there for people to have someone walk through the process of pregnancy, endure the sickness, endure the comfort, as well as the joys of feeling the kicks in life, movement on the inside, all the highs and lows of carrying a baby, and then not just carrying it, but then actually giving birth in the recovery process. Whether it's something that somebody can do or, or had complications to do, the option is there to have somebody Go through the process of pregnancy, delivery, the recovery. All those things can, can be bypassed. But even though that somebody can do that and that option is there for carrying a, a baby, that option is not there when it comes to carrying our own salvation. You know, I have an analogy. Where's... Where's my basketball? I'm not going to play basketball. Oh, I was supposed to have one. Um, but, okay, Renee, can you come up here for a second? Um, we're not about to do a little game of horse or anything, but, oh, look, I can still dribble. Okay, um, that was not that great uh, at basketball. <laughs> okay, I would come down to you, but I don't trust my unequal weight going on right here. But there is, as much as I say that we can't, like, I can't, um, that I got to carry this own baby. Obviously, I've, I'm carrying my own baby, but I've, I would be lying. I would be lying to you if I didn't have moments of intense uncomfortableness and just thought, it just feels like a ball right here that I can't move. And I'm like, if I could, can you just, I'm like, can you just hold this belly for just a second? Like, I just need a good night's sleep. Can you hold it for a second? And then, okay, and then give it back. I'll carry it again in the morning. And then, uh, or there has been definite times where I've, where I've thought, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I could just get, like, if I could just breathe real deep and fill my breath all the way to my toes. And, and I'd be like, oh, can I just take a deep breath? I mean, I've definitely thought, even though it's like impossible, to be like, can I just take this ball? Can you just carry this real fast? So I just have just relief, just relief. So I just go do what I want to do. And okay, then I'll take it back. And actually, man, I really want to get a, um, you know, I really want to get a good run in and not have anything in the way and not be thinking about all this stuff. And can I just go do what I want to do? And then, hey, when I come back, just just then and you give it back to me and just I wish man there had definite been times where I've been like hey I've thought in my head wouldn't it be nice wouldn't it be nice can you just hold this for a second so I could just go do what I want to do so I don't have to be burdened by the inconvenience so I could take some deep breaths so I can uh just yeah do what I want to do be free a little bit can you just hold it for me but the reality is, 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 is I can't. Like, I'm the only one that can carry this baby. I'm the only one right now that's choosing to carry and, and experience the sufferings and also experience the joy and, and on the due date experience the pain and the joy of delivering this baby. Everybody say, it's yours to carry. Thanks, Renee. This is yours. You can have it. <laughs> And you know, that's what the, in Philippians 2.12, it talks about this. It talks about carrying our own salvation. And I think sometimes we, we forget that we're the only ones that can truly walk out and work out our salvation. Pastor Todd mentioned last night that it's not a church, it's not a pastor's job, it's our job to work out our own salvation. 
And a lot of times we do. We kind of want to be like pass off the salvation. We want to kind of pass off the conviction. Like, hey, can you hold this? Because this is really uncomfortable. And I don't want to go do what I want to do. I don't want to go party. I don't want to think about it. And you, can you just know when we're saved, we're saved. Todd White, again, talked about this last night. You know, there's an analogy, in, 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 or not an analogy, but the reality when you're, when you're a running back in football, when you are, there's a time where, as a running back, if there, that you can pass the ball to somebody else as long as you're not crossing over the line of scrimmage. But once you've crossed over the line of scrimmage, you are running the ball. You can't pass it off. You know, when we give our life to Christ, it's like passing the line of scrimmage. It's like, man, this is what I've decided. I'm not passing this off. I'm not still deciding if I'm a part of the world or if I'm, or if I'm calling myself a Christian. Like, this is what I've decided to do, and therefore I am running the ball. I'm not passing it off. No matter how much I have to endure, no matter how much I have to be blocked or be hit, I am, whole, I am carrying this ball forward because of the goal before me. And Philippians 2.12, it says, So then, my dear brothers, just as you have always obeyed my instruction with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, right? I mean, you could, you could replace it with not only, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only at Victory Conference. I mean, not only when Todd White is having everybody like touch you done, everyone's getting healed and all that type of stuff, not only then, but now much more in my absence, now much more when you go home, now much more when you go to mother and father your kids and show up at your workplace and show up in your dorm, wherever you go now, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your own salvation. What does that mean? That is cultivate it. Cultivate it. Bring it to full effect. Actively pursue spiritual maturity with all inspired fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. So it says, continue to work out your own salvation. Again, what does that mean? To cultivate it. Does it mean to work for our salvation? It means to work from our salvation. There's some cultivating that needs to happen. There's some activation that needs to happen. There's some renewing of the mind that needs to happen. Using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything. Pastor Sammy talked about on Tuesday. He says sometimes you got to prophesy to yourself and sometimes you got to rebuke yourself. That is working out your salvation our salvation. So the scripture lays it out right here that salvation is not just about being forgiven of sins and having the choice to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven, but it truly is an invitation to experience our highest potential. I mean, the highest form of living and experiencing victory right here on earth. How sad would it be if the only place you experience victory is heaven? When you have salvation here on this earth, when we have tickets and promises to participate in a lifestyle of victory, as we were worshiping, I feel like God said some people in here are more familiar with being a victim than a victor. Because the lack of ability and time to work out your own salvation Relying on podcasts, relying on, again, we got we to gotta have the counselors. We got to have the, uh, the pastors, the teachers of the word. Again, we got to get together uh, corporately. We got to get together. But there comes a point where there's some things that only you can carry. When the session is over, when the therapy is done, when the medicine wears off, there's things that only you and I can do to work out our own salvation that allows us to personally experience victory. But it takes some work, right? 
Again, not working for our salvation. If you still, if you still read this scripture with the mindset, oh, well, it's saying working for our salvation, so legalistic, then you have not been work, you have not been doing this because even it says like actively pursue spiritual maturity. If you still think that, there's still some spiritual immaturity going on. Actively pursue spiritual maturity that I'm not working for salvation. But I'm working from a place of knowing who I am in Christ and receiving and in participating in all the victory that God has promised me. So the invitation to live out our highest potential, and this potential is an unraveling of dreams. I mean, this potential is an unraveling of natural giftings and spiritual giftings and assignments. This potential, again, is a life experiencing victory over our flesh, victory over spirit of despair, victory over spirit of anxiety, victory over spirit of disappointment, victory over sickness, victory over insecurities, victory Victory over intimidation, victory over weariness and laziness, victory over defeat, victory over worry. We are meant to experience victory. I am passionate about this because I do not want to, I don't want to be guilty of calling myself a Christian and claiming to know Christ, but my life not saying victory. I do not want you to be more, f- for, more familiar with being a victim of your circumstances than experiencing and knowing what it means to experience victory over them. Working out our salvation. And that is through our personal salvation of what God has done for us on the cross. That means putting effort into your Christian life. And we have this power because of what Jesus accomplished. It needs to be evident in our life. Every single one of us are supposed to carry victory. We cannot carry what we are not experiencing personally. If we are allowing and we want to lead people into victory over over anxiety and worry and fear, how can we lead people to a place if we have not personally experienced Victory in areas, again, working out your salvation, whether that it's not just, yes, responding to an altar call, and yes, God can immediately heal and set, set you free, but there are moments where I feel free. You know, you're singing that song, I'm no longer a slave of fear, and you walk out, you're like, yeah, I'm no longer a slave of fear. I'll never be afraid again, but then the reality is you walk out those doors, and something happens, and you're like, whoa, fear. Okay, what happened? I thought the presence of God, it healed me, and I completely free. No, working out your salvation, you got to renew your mind. <laughs> That you are no longer a slave to fear. You got to renew your mind, working out your salvation. And again, as much as I want to pass off like that basketball, pass off that the uncomfortableness of the pregnancy. Sometimes there's some uncomfortableness when it comes to walking out our salvation, like forgiving people. Like truly rejoicing and celebrating the people that are getting the opportunities and the financial increase that you desire. I mean, sometimes that's really uncomfortable, right? But we're called to work out our salvation. And when we forfeit the suffering that comes from our salvation, and I used to like not you know, want to read the suffering of salvation, my first mind went to like to bad things happening. Suffering for, suffering for our self, um, suffering is talking about like daily denying ourselves, our flesh suffering, 
us, us not submitting to our flesh, but submitting to the spirit and the will of God. When we forfeit the suffering and the process, did you know that we also forfeit the joy that's on the other side? The joy of experiencing what it means to truly extend forgiveness. The joy of experiencing the true peace and the nature of God. I mean, that's biblical. Jesus, he endured the cross before him. He exp- he en- if Jesus didn't endure the cross, he wouldn't have experienced the joy set before him. He wouldn't have experienced the fruit of his obedience. He wouldn't have experienced the joy of reconciling us to God. But he endured the cross and the suffering because the joy set before him. Everybody say, it's mine to carry. This means giving attention to our own salvation. Sometimes we show great concern for the work of God in others and not enough for his work in us. We should care about the souls of others, but this passion and love and care for others must begin with our own soul, walking out our own salvation, drawing personally from the power of Christ. Let's not neglect working out our own salvation. How does it say to do that? With fear and trembling. Not out of, not in fear or in terror, but but a holy awe and fear that if I am going to run this ball and I am going to score this touchdown, if I'm going to experience this victory in my life, if I want to experience well done, my good and faithful servant, I have to work out my own salvation. I have to work through this process. I have to deal with the hurts. I have to confront the fears. I have to work through the pain. I got to work through the issue of, man, what's really off? Why have I lost my joy? I've got to, from, from salvation, work out my salvation. If I want to fulfill the plans he has set out for me from the beginning and answer the call of God in my life, I have to take the time and know how to work this thing out myself. And I'm convinced that, that this doesn't happen on a normal basis. I truly believe what um, uh, Pastor Todd said last night, that the majority of Christians, that we don't open up our Bible. I mean, that it won't, or if we do open it, that we don't have a surrender to submit to what his word says. But it's in submitting and obeying what the word of God says that leads us to experiencing victory. So again, what does that look like? It means renewing our mind to God's forgiveness. To God's forgiveness of what he has forgiven us for so that we can forgive others. The people that have been the hardest for me to forgive has been found reminding myself and renewing myself in the word of God of what he has forgiven me of. And that if I don't forgive others, then how can I expect him to forgive me? I mean, that has been renewing, that is working out, renewing my mind of salvation and what he's done on the cross. Renew, what does this look like? Renewing our mind to who we are in Christ so that we can walk in boldness, so that we can fully respond to what he has asked of us. I mean, fully respond, working out your salvation, knowing who you are in Christ, knowing our identity in Christ. No matter how much prophetic words you got on you, you got to work out your salvation and believe and renew your mind that you are who God says you are and you can do what he says you can do. If you're still saying no to the things that God is calling you to say yes to, it's not a problem with God and the plan of God on your life. It's you need to work out your salvation. You need to actively pursue spiritual maturity and cultivate and activate the power of God that's on the inside of you. Again, we're talking about experiencing victory personal victory, that we're moving forward, that we're not retreating in fear, but we're moving forward. What does this look like? 
That means that if we have been walking with the Lord, which I said I believe the majority of us have, if we are still bound by greed and we're not growing in our generosity, we have not renewed our mind and worked out the part of our salvation, be reminded of the generous love of God and the generosity of our Heavenly Father on the cross. I mean, these are things that are keeping people right, the world, greed, jealousy, envy that are keeping them from living the fullest potential. Let's not be victims of the same thing that the world is. Let's not stay in that. Let's move out of that. Church, let's grow in our generosity. Why? Because of what he is, again, working from our salvation and the generosity that he has already shown to us. What does it look like to work out our salvation it means guarding our heart it's taking personal responsibility of allowing god to remove the toxins and the bitterness in our hearts you know so many of us maybe in this room you know we're gravitated toward Maybe not so many of us, a few of us, you know, like the non-GMO type labels or no toxins or chemical free or um, what all those little words mean and say at Whole Foods and Sprouts and even Great Value Brand, they all got the no toxins and, and the no hormones and hormone free and all that different stuff. We're looking to put no toxins and chemicals in our body and we'll pay an extra price for that. But how many of us are okay with living with a toxic heart? How many of us okay are okay with living with unforgiveness and, and living with impurities and, and living two-faced life and living a thing where, man, I'll be genuine out here, but, but secretly, man, I don't, I hate them actually. <laughs> I mean, how many of us are okay with the toxins in our heart, because I'm telling you, seeds grow. Seeds grow. And the seeds of toxic um, habits, the seeds of toxic responses in our heart, they will grow. They're going to get fed somewhere, and they will bear fruit in our life. We get to choose what fruit is being bared through our life, but what seeds we allow to grow in our hearts. Some of us allow the seeds of doubt. That's a toxic thing in our heart, doubt. What happens when doubt grows in our heart? We are not going to walk in and, and see the promises of God fulfilled. Where do we read in the Bible that they entered into the promised land because of the doubt in their heart? No, they entered into the promises of God and experienced the victory that God has, the provision of God. If you want to experience the, the provision and the financial increase in your life, it is not going to be settling with doubt in your heart. A spirit of doubt is not going to produce the faith that is needed to experience God's victory in your life. So what does that look like? That means allowing ourselves to be honest with what's going on in our hearts. Guarding our heart. That's working out our salvation. Pulling out the weeds of resentment and belief. I mean, honestly, I was kind of broken hearted by a story recently I heard of just how long this lady has not been to um, church of something that happened like 10 years ago and still getting over some things. And I'm not wanting to downplay what hurt that person. It's not about downplaying. But I'm saying how many of us don't, ex don't deepen our relationships and our friendships. How many of us still allow walls to be built in our hearts because of things that we did not deal with 10 years ago? And giving people a fresh slate and extending 
extending the mercy that needs to be extended, working out our salvation, daily choosing to deny our own way so that his spirit and characteristic can be evident. It takes both me and God. If so, why would God say, like I said, why would the word of God say to renew our mind? It takes both of us. It takes the Holy Spirit and it takes us doing our part. In Isaiah 32, 17, in the Amplified Classic, it says, And the effect of righteousness will be peace. The effects of our salvation will be peace, internal and external. And the result of righteousness will be quietness and confident trust forever. The effects, knowing who we are in Christ, our salvation being worked out, is meant to affect our daily living. The effects of righteousness will be peace, internal peace. In your family, in your workplace, there will be peace. You know, I think about a recent story in my personal life, and I'll ask the keys to, to come up talking about working out your salvation and from a spirit of faith and not doubt. You know, there's a dream that God has definitely put, you know, in Paul and I's heart, and, and there's some things that he's stirring up in us, whether it's personally or, or the church But just because, like I said before, just because God speaks to you that something is going to happen or can happen, it doesn't mean that it's just going to happen. Because you know, like when you hear God say something, it takes faith to believe God that you just heard what what you said, what he said, right? It takes faith to acknowledge, I just heard from God. But the same faith that it took that mustard seed of faith that it took to believe that you heard from God is not, will not be the same level of faith needed to see it come to pass. We have to grow our faith. The people in the Bible that saw things come to pass, like Abraham, it says he grew in faith. And so there's things that God has has spoken to me. There's things that God has spoken to Paul. There's things that God has spoken to you. But the way that that baby, the way that 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 thing, the way that the promise is gonna be delivered and what you're gonna experience is gonna come through a spirit of faith and working out your salvation by building and putting your faith into practice. Just like this baby without contractions cannot be delivered when we stir a spirit of faith and we renew our mind to our salvation, it's like contractions that deliver what God wants to deliver in our life. To deliver the promises of God, of his peace and provision, his joy and his fulfillment. You know, and just last week I was thinking about these things that God has has spoken to us, and again, you hear God, especially in environments of faith and church and moments, and you write it all down, and you feel so confident that that's God, and you're like, yes, but then there was moments, like, just like I had the other night where I was in down in my bed, and I could not go to sleep because I was thinking of how this is going to happen, and how that's going to happen, and And I was just like, oh, okay. Like I just started going, like spiraling into a spirit of fear and spirit of doubt and second guessing. And I just, honestly, I just stopped myself. I like, the devil's not making me, sure, he wants to lead me to fear, but he's not making me go down this spiral right now. I am choosing to spiral down in fear. Yes, he wants to lead me there, but I am being chosen. <laughs> I am choosing where, he, where he's leading me and who's leading me, a spirit of fear. But then I said, you know what? Just like I'm cho- choosing to go down this spiral of fear, I am going to choose to spiral in faith right now. I'm not gonna spiral up in faith with my own opinions. I'm not gonna spiral my faith with the words of some, with a great word that even was spoken directly to me as much as it is what will spiral me into a spirit of faith is the word of God. 
And so I just started, I just grabbed, again, I was too lazy to, to go on the other side of the room and get my Bible. It was like 1 a.m. I was like, thank God, my phone's right here. I'm going to look up some scriptures, and I'm going to go to bed thinking about faith. I'm going to go to bed thinking renewed in faith. Church, that is walking out our salvation. The same level of faith that it takes for you to come here and receive a word from God is not going to be the same level of faith needed to see what needs to come to pass through your life. Yes, it takes faith as small as a mustard seed, but did you know a mustard seed is meant to be watered? Did you know that a mustard seed can actually provide shade as it grows, can provide shade, can provide protection? Your faith, it's meant to grow. It's meant to provide protection for you and for others. It's meant to spread out. You're meant to see the effects and the overflow of faith. And I love the rest of the scripture, Philippians 2, 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and do his will. It's his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his, and it's all for his pleasure. It is God that's gonna work in you. It is God that's going to do this as we work out our salvation. It is God who can produce. It is what we were doing just a little bit ago, resting in the presence of God, allowing him to work and shift and do. And it's the Holy Spirit. He delights. He pleasures. It's his pleasure to give you the desire to do his will. And I felt like as I was praying for you this morning that, that God would restore the joy of your salvation. How are you gonna walk out something? How are you gonna wanna work out your salvation if you don't enjoy your salvation? If you just tolerate it? If it's just the burden, if it's just that, like the baby, like get it out, like this is in my way because I really wanna do what I wanna do. I wanna say what I wanna say. I wanna live my life the way that I wanna live my life. Like get it out of the way. Like if it's looking at that as a toleration, you'll never experience the joy of your salvation. When it's something that's tolerated, Psalms 51 verse 12 says, let me experience the joy of your deliverance. Sustain me by giving me the desire to obey. And then it says, as a result of me, well, no, no, the next, yeah, scripture 13, yeah. For it is God who, no, 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 sorry. For, uh, Psalms 51, 12, and then 13. And th but it, then it says, and then, there it goes, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Let me again experience the joy of your deliverance. Sustain me by giving me the desire to obey. Then I will teach your ways. Then I will return to you. It is out of the joy of the salvation that he was going to then proclaim the truth. But it came from the joy of his salvation. And then people will return to you. Then there will be productivity. Then there will be the mission of Christ being moving forward. As my joy is restored and what you've delivered me from personally. And then go on to verse 14. Forgive me for shedding blood, O God, who saves. Then I will joyfully let me personally experience your forgiveness. Then I will joyfully sing and preach and declare of your forgiveness. It starts with the personal joy and encounter with our salvation. But a lot of us, again, we flip it around. We're like, yes, I will preach of your forgiveness. And I will tell other people what they need to do. That, yes, I will go out and do what you've asked me to do. But the, the gas is going to run empty fast. If we are not restored in the joy of our salvation. I love Passion Translation says it like this. My passion, let my passion for life be restored. Tasting joy in every single breakthrough you give me. Every single deliverance. Every single victory that I taste the joy of that. Hold me close to you with the willing spirit that obeys every word that you say. Then I can show to other guilty ones how loving and merciful you are. 
They will find their way back home to you knowing that you will forgive them. Oh God, my saving God, deliver me fully from every sin, even the sin that brought blood, blood guilt. Then my heart, again, as I experience your forgiveness, your mercy, the personal encounter with your peace, the personal encounter with your joy, then my heart will once again be thrilled to sing. I wonder, I wonder how many of us have lost our joy of giving because we have not allowed ourselves to receive the gifts that God generously wants to personally give you. Then my heart will once again be thrilled to sing the passionate songs of joy and deliverance. You know, I like to put my hand on my belly and obviously feel the movement and life of this, this baby growing. And as I was praying and as I was processing what God was speaking, I feel like there's people in this room that, you know, when I haven't felt life, when I haven't felt movement, there is a little bit of concern. Like, are you okay? Are you in there? You know, what was it? Was it the rare meat? It was too rare yesterday. Like, I don't know. Like, all these thoughts, like, come up in my mind. Like, what's going on in there? And, and a lot of us, you know, I was thinking about how many of us have not experienced the life and the movement of the salvation on the inside of us. It's been a while that we haven't experienced the rivers of life. Your Christianity and your salvation, it's not stale. Your salvation is not the problem. But because you have stopped working out your salvation, because you have stopped personally experiencing who God is in your life, there has not been movement. What personally needs to be experienced this morning that leads to movement and life on the inside? Some of us in this room have seen it more of an obligation rather than a joy to build our faith. Somebody have, some of us have seen it as more of an obligation to, to do this or do that for Christ instead of out of a genuine joy our jobs, wherever that might be, in the church, outside of the church, have we lost the joy of our salvation because everything comes from that, a desire to live to please him. I'm gonna ask every one of us to stand up in this room. And bow our heads and close our eyes. I believe some of you are, are here today that you do. You need to experience the joy of salvation, the movement of life. You've lost your joy to serve, to give, the desire to please, to please him. And just like his word says, it is him who gives us the desire It is him who works in us and through us, giving us the desire to please him. That's not your desire to please him and do what's right in the eyes of God is not going to be birthed by your own flesh. It's going to be birthed by the spirit of God. And the spirit of God is on the inside of you. And I don't know what crossroads of decision you're in, what you're needing to grab onto, what you're needing to let go of what perspectives need to be shift, what person needs to be forgiven, or maybe that's you. But the Spirit of God wants to birth that desire to please Him this morning. Again, it's not going to come from the Spirit of flesh. It's going to come from the Spirit of God, a supernatural miracle. If you're here and if you're honest, think, man, I've made it about something else. I have lost the joy of my salvation, the joy of evangelism, the joy of forgiving others because of lack of personally experiencing forgiveness, personally experiencing the peace and the joys of our Heavenly Father. If 
God is speaking to you this morning. Can you just raise your hand? Thank you. Yeah. If you raise your hand this morning, can you just join me here down at this altar? I believe that there's some people that want to come around you and pray for you, that, that God would restore the joy of what it means to know him, to honor him, to please him, to willingly and joyfully give your life to him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. People are getting their joy back. People are not settling for being a victim, but are moving in to being a victor, to personally encountering the peace of God. You're going to go back to the same circumstances maybe, but you're going to be a new person. You're going to have new eyes to see. In Jesus' name. Repeat this prayer after me. God, Heavenly Father, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Deepen my passion. Restore my passion. Renew my passion to go after you with all of my heart and to fulfill all that you've called me to do. Man, I know this sounds weird because not everybody is like pregnant in here or if you're male, you're not experienced that. Not everybody's experienced that, but it's almost like in the spirit, I just see contractions. I just see that, that, that movement is happening again, that the spirit of God is, is inducing, is, is um, inducing and accelerating the delivery of a promise because there's contractions that are happening, that something is being released where you've been trying to release and push and see and produce by your own. It's the Spirit of God right now that is miraculously moving. Your salvation is working. You're relying a spirit of expectancy. You're using the faith. You're using what God has given you. You're responding to the Spirit of God. It's like staleness, like things are being soft again. It's being moldable again because you're using it. The more that you use Play-Doh and clay, the more that it stays moldable and movable, the more that things can happen with it, the more that things can form. But if you let it sit and you don't do anything with it, it hardens. And I feel like there's people in this room that your faith has hardened because you haven't used it. There's nothing wrong with your faith. It's that you haven't been using it. And in the presence of God, it's like there's a softening happening. You just responding to the Spirit of God. Your responsive obedience right here, acknowledging some things need to shift and change. Again, it's it's forming and it's formulating those contractions. And, 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 and it's like the clay is becoming moldable again. Those who have been weighed down by the spirit of doubt, I'm going to ask you to come and join us here at this altar. That you've been weighed down by a spirit of doubt and despair and defeat. I mean, the enemy has been trying to get you to second guess what God has spoken. Maybe because the people have said something or maybe you've allowed the enemy to speak to you about something. Circumstances haven't changed the way you want them, when you want them, and there's been a spirit of doubt. I believe that there needs to be life and movement. You've allowed doubt to settle. You've allowed doubt to settle before your faith was pliable, you heard, and it was working, but it's like a spirit of doubt has settled in just like that clay or Plato has set out in the 
the sign. You have been basking in a spirit of doubt and you didn't even realize you've been weighed by a spirit of doubt. And I pray right now for rivers of life and faith to rise up in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, I thank you for a spirit of faith to rise up in this place that we will not be intimidated by doubt. We will not be intimidated by a timeline. In Jesus' mighty name, we will not be moved by a timeline. But I thank you that we are moved by the faith of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for a greater conviction to walk out the call of God on our life. I pray for a deeper conviction to say yes to the things of God wholeheartedly. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for a deeper conviction to be carriers of peace, to be carriers of joy, to be carriers of life. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. There's people in this room that have been a victim of something for so long. You, you tasted victory and there might have been drops of it just kind of um, just kind of barely tasted at different times glimpses of hope that you were on your way to victory but something pulled you back and you just feel like you've been victims of shame for so long or victims of of torment or victims of sleepless night or victims of anxiety uh, of victims of stress I mean, you're so much more familiar with stress than you are rest. You're so much more familiar with shame than you are righteousness. You, you, you forgot what it is to taste victory. I believe that God wants you to taste victory this morning because I, I, I believe that he wants to remind you that it's possible. I, I believe that he wants you to tangibly sense victory so that you have a renewed vision of what you're working out. If that's you, you've been a victim for something for a long time and you need just a glimpse of hope to experience victory in an area, I ask you to join down as a response, as a response to what God is speaking. I believe that he wants to wave a banner of victory over your life for you to tangibly taste the victory, taste and see that the Lord is good and he's going to just renew like your taste buds you're gonna get a new sense like i've tasted victory so i'm not settling for being a victim i've tasted heaven i've tasted the peace of god i've tasted it and i'm going after it i'm going after it i'm doing the work i'm releasing what i need to release so i can move forward i'm confronting the fear i'm not going to be are more familiar with fear than you are faith. Let faith rise up in this place. God, to believe you so that we can do the things that you call us to do. Do we got a faith song? The spirit of faith. We believe in you, Jesus.
Abraham inherited God's promises through faith and patience. Through faith and patience, he saw what was promised. Both of them. Some of you've had the faith, but you've been impatient. Some of you've had the patient, but you've had no faith. You're just waiting in vain. Like faith is what's going to bring forth the promise and the victory that is yours. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you. We declare, we boldly and joyfully declare that we are yours and that we belong to you. God, that we are full of gratitude of the opportunities that you've given us and the roles and the positions and the place and the part that we have to play in moving forward the mission of Christ whether it's spreading your characteristics and who you are around the world and to our families, or whether it's spreading the gospel, whatever it is, God, I thank you that whatever you're asking of us today in your presence, there it's not just a, a yes, but it's a joyful and a willing yes. In Jesus' name, God, solidify what you've started in this place. We worship you, God. Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name. Can we give God a shout of praise this morning?